The most prevalent rumor surrounding the film is that it will be introducing a multiversal adaptation of Marvel's Illuminati. That's right, the Illuminati is real. In the comics, the Illuminati comprises of the brightest minds in the 616, who are originally brought together to protect the Infinity Stones. This film's adaptation seems to be a group that is in charge of ensuring that Scarlet Witch doesn't rip through every single reality in her multiversal game of hide-and-go-seek. <laughs> The lineup is rumored to consist of cameos from the multiverse of Marvel movies, which narratively makes sense because who has time for character development nowadays? Clearly, we watch these movies to watch actors make weird finger movements, <laughs> not because of compelling plots, what are you, crazy? The team features Professor Xavier, and as great as X-Men First Class was, no one is really asking for the return of James McAvoy. Sir Patrick Stewart may have said he retired from the role in Logan but he also once called himself a respectable actor, and then he starred as a literal piece of crap in the Emoji movie, so, you know, stranger things have happened. Should we wash our hands? <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> Listen, I, I really don't care which of the two is playing Professor X, they were both great in the role, but I do have one request, something extraordinarily important that has not been seen in any of the X-Men films. I'm talking about that hover chair, baby! Imagine Professor X going all ka while in his Among Us looking floaty, that would be amazing. When discussions began about who would take over the mantle for Black Panther in the MCU, there was a surprising amount of people that wanted to see Killmonger take over, which is weird, because, you know, the plot of the first movie was all about how Killmonger shouldn't be in any sort of power in Wakanda. Anyways, one of the most exciting moments of the Doctor Strange trailer was seeing Strange Supreme make the jump over from animation and into live action. That one link alone shows that characters from What If are fair game in the Multiverse of Madness. This is where a Michael B. Jordan Black Panther can at least make some sense. The last time we seen Killmonger in that show, he was trapped in an eternal prison. You know, trying to rewrite the multiverse tends to have some repercussions. Yeah, and I'm just getting started. Here's the thing, the Illuminati lineup does include the Black Panther from time to time, so with the current absence of an MCU representative, it would be a fun nod to have this what-if scenario take place in the multiverse while still leaving the door open for a more appropriate Black Panther in MCU proper. Now, I gotta say, this one is the craziest of all possibilities. But have you ever watched an Iron Man movie and gone, you know what this needs more of? Tom Cruise? Well, one of the very first rumors for Doctor Strange 2 was that Tom Cruise would be playing a multiversal Tony Stark. Before you ask, Yes, this is in reference to the almost casting from the original Iron Man movie. If they are going to be doing a comic-accurate Illuminati, it's either Tom Cruise, zombie Iron Man, or a quarter of the budget going to RDJ. I know this sounds like a super obscure reference that would probably go over most audiences' heads, but No Way Home featured a joke that was in reference to the leaked Sony emails, so I guess everything is fair game at this point. Speaking of Spider-Man No Way Home, in that movie, the multiverse and the reintroduction of fan favorites are used to display the movie's theme of second chances. As luck would have it, not only is this character a member of the Illuminati, but the actor could definitely use a second chance in the role. I'm talking about the stretch himself, Mr. Fantastic. Say that again? <laughs> oh, hey there, no, 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 not Miles Teller. I mean, Yoan Griffith. I know we were about to get the MCU rendition of the Fantastic Four, and I'm sure we'd all like to forget about the rise of the Silver Surfer, but in my opinion, Yoan's casting was as misused as Andrew Garfield's in The Amazing Spider-Man. This would give Yoan a chance to shine before the torch must be passed. Ooh, speaking of torches, how great would a Chris Evans cameo be? When all hope seems lost, Doctor Strange looks up and sees Steve Rogers, only for him to yell flame on? Dude's been cameoing in like everything these days. I'm sure he'd be up to it. You know, it's a popcorn move. Or we could finally get that John Krasinski fan cast out of the way. Listen, I know I'm about to make a hot take here, but that's probably the most overdone fan casting I've ever seen. Having him as a Reed Richards variant would satisfy fans while also opening the door for the king, Glenn Howerton, to play the role. But of course, that idea is a bigger stretch than Mr. Fantastic himself.
Rounding out the team, we have Black Bolt and Namor. I have a feeling we may not see Namor because he's never really been adapted. Rumors are that he may appear in the next Black Panther movie, and it may be a little jarring for audiences to see two new interpretations of the same character so close together. Black Bolt, on the other hand, <laughs> oh boy, I'm excited about this possibility. Of course, the movie needs to have some cannon fodder. For Scarlet Witch to be a threatening enough villain, some characters have to die, and honestly, a Sam Raimi stylized murder of Anson Mount's Black Bolt would probably get more cheers than the entire season of Inhumans got on ABC. Remember when Doctor Strange was all, the multiverse is a concept about which we know frighteningly little. Well, luckily for him, there's an entire department that's dedicated to Scooby doing that crap. Considering Loki and Sylvie are directly responsible for the branching of timelines, I wouldn't be surprised if one of them ends up popping in to explain the multiverse exposition that He Who Remains already gave on Disney+. Loki has also grown quite wise to variants, having gone on an entire adventure with, um, himself, I guess? It's best not to question it. I'm sure Doctor Strange will have some questions about when he meets the version of himself that can shoot snakes out of his hand, and the other one that looks like an Italian soap salesman. If you still haven't seen No Way Home, you're about to be pissed off at me in a few seconds, so click away. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, so am I the only one who felt that the Spider-Mans didn't really have a real goodbye in that movie? I mean, there was that hug, but that was pretty much it. I can't help but feel Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield signed multi-picture deals. Of course, the Salami Rat himself directed Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3. If we do go dimension hopping, I would love to see the streets of New York make a return so we can get a little taste of what Spider-Man 4 could have been. Yes, I know what you're thinking, we just got an entire movie dedicated to me living out that fantasy, but that wasn't enough. Give me more leaked pictures of Spider-Man! I can't believe I made it this far talking about cameos in a Sam Raimi movie, and I haven't even brought up the king of Raimi cameos, Bruce Campbell. Bruce has already confirmed his involvement with the film, which makes it all that more fun to try and guess who he will be. Of course, I just mentioned Spider-Man 4. That movie would have revealed Bruce to have been Quentin Beck. Can you imagine if during dimension hopping, America Chavez opens a portal and we enter mid-battle with Toby vs. Bruce? I'd start yelling the lyrics to Dashboard Confessionals Vindicated in the audience right then. Another surprising possibility is Ash himself. Marvel Zombies and Army of Darkness had an official licensed crossover back in 2007. Since then, Bruce has stated that he's retired from the role, and what better way to have that be depicted by Ash being eaten by a zombified Captain America? Although saying that out loud, I really hate what cinema has become. Maybe Scorsese was right. Okay, so I'm just manifesting this one here. I'm just throwing it out into the universe and hoping, hey, praying that it comes true. Can you picture how wonderfully insane it would be to have Nicolas Cage directed by Sam Raimi? Who am I if you don't tell me what I want to know? I'm gonna let him out. <sighs> I mean, it's not like Nicolas Cage would turn down the role, and fans have been championing for the return of Johnny Blaze, so why not? Oh gosh, it would be such a good troll on Marvel's part to finally have Mephisto in the MCU, but it's just from Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. Another fan favorite character that is long overdue for a proper return is Haley Atwell's Peggy Carter. For a character that hasn't done all that much action since the 1940s, we've seen Peggy pop up everywhere, and it's about time she goes back to being super. Currently the leader of the Guardians of the Multiverse, the team that Supreme Strange himself is on, it would be nice to allow this movie to be a jump pad for Captain Carter to leap out of animation and into live action. With the Young Avengers being set up, I'd love to see Peggy take on a Nick Fury type role for the group of gifted youngsters. And yeah, speaking of the Young Avengers, of course Speed and Wakan are going to be popping up in this movie. We may have gotten baited with Ralph, but WandaVision doubled down that the only Quicksilver is Aaron Taylor Johnson. With the actor now getting ready to play the villain Kraven the Hunter for Sony, the window for a Quicksilver appearance is closing quicker than those bullets on Sokovia. As mad as you were at finding out Quicksilver wasn't in WandaVision, imagine how Wanda herself feels about that. As the Scarlet Witch goes from multiverse to multiverse, it would be a heartwarming farewell if she got to say a proper goodbye to her brother. How about this for a post credit scene? Deadpool just walking through a portal. That's it. No fanfare. No epic incident. Just Deadpool seeing an open portal and going straight on through to the MCU. We know Deadpool 3 is in active development, and I think the absolute best way to incorporate him is to literally undersell it as much as possible.